Welcome to Down the Pipeline, the show where I find RPGs and then we all spend our money on them. Today I've found two RPGs that I think are definitely worth spending money on and your wallet will hate me for it. First one is a campaign setting for 5th edition Dungeons and Dragons that I think is really awesome. And the other one is a dark steampunk game that you might have actually heard about already, but I'm going to share it with you anyway because I think it's really cool. So, the first game is Dark Plains, and I really shouldn't say it's a game because it's really campaign setting for 5th edition and anything else, really. Dark Plain is a, it's a combination of Ravenloft and Call of Cthulhu smash into one another, throw in a bit of Anne Rice and other gothic horror, and what shakes out is Dark Plain. And I think this is really cool because I love Ravenloft, and I love Call of Cthulhu, and to smash them together and put them in d and I think is great. And this setting is this dark, gritty feel that, while having heavy influence from Ravenloft and Call of Cthulhu and Lovecraft, is wholly different. It even actually, on its Kickstarter page, recognizes how there might be similarities between Ravenloft and Call of Cthulhu, like, respectively, and addresses how the the major differences between Dark Plane and you know those things. I think this is really cool because even the creators, you know, he's he's well aware of my game's kind of like that or my settings like that, but it's not. So here's why, so that you don't get mistaken. And I think that's a really smart you know way to do it because when I scrolled through it, I was like, mm, this kind of looks like that, and then to see that it's recognized is is a, a lot of a lot of really good things are happening there in the mind of the creator then and uh so this campaign setting uh deals with a lot of cosmic horrors god is dead our god like in the well not our god the judeo-christian god in the weird because it's our it's our world i'm butchering this a little bit but it's our world only shortly after creation god died so it's going with the you know Judeo-Christian God creation story. Over God was slain by her own child, and then we get all these dark Cthuloid style creatures to come through, and it creates this world where everything is super terrifying, but not to the point of bleakness like Ravenloft and Cthulhu. So you can be heroic while fighting against these awful monstrous things, and. So just on that general layer, I like this the the setting. But what's really cool is that it since it's designed for fifth edition, it it's adding to what makes fifth edition strong. And that's versatility. And the creator even talks about how uh you know, back in the nineties and uh you know during second edition there was tons of settings, all of them just odd. I mean, you got Ravenloft, Dark Sun, Birthright. I mean, it's, and all of these are really cool. al Kadem, which is technically Forgotten Realms, but not at the same time. Um, so it's all of the, like he talks about how all of these things were, like existed. But then into 3.5, we started to lose them into 4. In Dark Sun made a, a small resurgence, but, you know, was quickly axed. And so he's trying to set a trend that for 5th edition, we'll definitely see a return of these these settings that aren't mainstream. They're not, you know, the you know cookie-cutter fantasy. They're very different and very niche. And I really like that because I felt that was something that was missing from 3, 3, 5, Pathfinder, and 4. So... The, the idea behind it, I think, is really strong to see that kind of come back and to prove to, you know, Wizards of the Coast and to other developers that settings are a viable thing to do, to make that, you know, you don't have to just do Eberron and Forgotten Realms and, you know, your, you know, the the homebrew Nintir Veil thing that they've got, they have for 4E that I think they're kind of doing with 5, I'm not really sure. And... So I really like the message that this is sending in that sense. I think the setting is really strong. And the really cool thing is it's system light. So it sets for 5th edition. But uh, it's supposed to also be really easy to quickly you know, plug it into something else that you're playing. 
much like the game in Blood Clans of Yorick that I mentioned three weeks ago um, in a review and I th months ago when I mentioned its release. So, and this project is actually already funded. It was only supposed to, like, the goal was 6,400. It currently has 15,000, 15 and a half thousand technically, and 15 days to go still. So there's, you know, stretch goals being hit and Graham Ward, who uh, created this, is just, he's, he's, he's on point on this. You know, the art is great and he's really captured at least in my person, like my mind, I mean, I, I, I plan on backing this. The second thing is a, uh, a game called Shattered, which is a dark steampunk game with a unique system uh, and a unique world. So it's set in this gritty kind of wasteland steampunk and it, uh, it 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 captures uh, this kind of like fallout sort of feel it seems like with uh, that just nitty gritty but also tying in elements of um, adventure with weird alien styled uh, lo locales much like uh, there's one place called the glass forest which is a a, a region that is made up of skyscraper sized obsidian shards just jutting out of the ground and i think this is really cool because it kind of has that numenera alien-esque feel while still not being so far out there necessarily that um you know you, you you're you know shocked when they have things like cows and horses and you know all the the plants and animals that we have but it also does offer some of its own animals and plants and things like that to give it its own unique flair and again the art on this book is amazing their kickstarter highlights a lot of the art with locales and names and everything and some of the races and i think it's really cool because the art is of super high quality it's not one of those games where you look at and go you know the writing's all right but this art's just shoddy it doesn't seem to have any of that here all these landscape pieces are spot on. They're very evocative. You look at them and you you want to tell a story about that picture in that region and go there. And I think that's really important is the art in the book. And especially in games where you do have these, you know, very alien landscapes where it's a little bit harder to kind of, you know, transport yourself there to have really good art that really showcases the the landscape and everything is very important. And the system is very, very simple, it, it appears. It's essentially, you've got rank, I think it's it's 1 to X. And each rank has um, a die code. So, like 1, 2, 3, and 4, it's D4, D6, D8, D10. So yeah, it's 4. And then when you hit 10, so there's 4 ranks. If you have rank 5, you just roll your d10 plus your d4 and it just keeps you know adding on like that and i think it's really simple because it's it's unique in the sense that you know i i haven't seen it done you know it's using this you know die mechanic but it's blending a die pool into this idea of um you know your standard just roll high and i really like that because i've seen systems that have these really cool ideas but they're awful to actually implement and they don't work. So to see both interesting art, interesting setting, and a system that doesn't look like it's too cumbersome at all, I think is a great uh, addition to all of this game. And then throwing in the fact that it's steampunk, which is a, a genre that, you know, you see a lot of in, you know, art and, uh, you know, fiction, but you don't really see it a lot in games that it captures it in a realistic way and i'm not talking about you know these super high-tech gears everywhere and it's unbelievable i'm talking about you know a slightly more you know clockwork styled steampunk but still nitty-gritty and i thoroughly enjoy that and i'll leave links down to both of these below um also steampunk or shattered is uh it is, all, is almost funded. 
It is at 15,000 of 16,000. It also has 15 days to go. I'll leave links to both of these games, the game and the setting, down below. And I encourage you to check them out for yourself and uh, back them if you enjoy them. So until next time.